This is our first session back after the Eid vacation uh, with the text Zad al Mustaqna of Imam al Hajawi. We reached the part where he spoke about Yawm al Arafah and Muzdalifa and issues pertaining to that, and now we're at the section where he says Faslun. And then he says, Thumma yufidu illa Mecca. After having done Yawm al Arafah, and stayed at Arafah and on to Muzdalifa, the people they move on to Mecca. إِذَا فَرْغَ الْحَاجُ مِنْ حَدِ الْمَنَاسِكِ اتَّجَهَ إِلَّا مَكَّةَ لِلطَّوَافِ Shaykh Mansour, he says, if the people finish from these rites of Hajj, the ones that we have previously spoken about, then they move on to Mecca for the Tawaf. وَهَادَ الطَّوَافُ يُسَمَّى And this Tawaf has a variety of names. From them is Tawaf Ziyara. Tawaf Ziyara. لِأَنَّهُ يَأْتِ مِنْ مِنَا فَيَزُورُ الْبَيْتِ Because the person, the Hajj, he comes from Mina, and he visits the house, meaning the Kaaba. وَلَا يُقِيمْ بَلْ يَرْجِعْ لِمِنَا And he doesn't stay in, in Mecca, rather he returns to Mina. He doesn't stay in the sanctuary in the Kaaba, rather he returns to Mina. And the second name given to this Tawaf is Tawaf al-Hajj. لِأَنَّهُ رُكْنٌ مِنْ أَلْكَانِ الْحَجْ Because it is a pillar from the pillars of Hajj. The third name, Tawaf al-Ifadah. لِأَنَّهُ يَأْتِ بِهِ إِنْدَمَا يَفِيدُ مِنْ مِنَا إِلَى مكة. Because he comes to it after he has finished on his way from Mina to Mecca. Fada Yafidu, the meaning of traveling from one place to another. وَهَذَا الطَّوَافِ رُكْنٌ مِنْ أَرْكَانِ الْحَجْ And this Tawaf is a pillar from the pillars of Hajj. لَا يَتِمُّ إِلَّا بِهِ It is not completed except with it. قال ابن قدامة, Imam Ibn Qudam, he says, لَا نَعْلَمُ فِي خِلَافًا we don't know in this issue that there is a difference of opinion on the matter. لِأَنَّ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قال because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hajj وَلْيَطَوَّفُونَ بِالْبَيْتِ الْأَطِيقِ and make tawaf around the Kaaba. And this was mentioned by Ibn Qudama in Al-Mughni, volume 3, page 390. The author, he says وَيَطُوفُ الْقَارِنُ وَالْمُفْرِدُ بِنِيَةِ الْفَرِيدَةِ طَوَافُ الزِّيَارَةِ the author, he says that the tawaf is made for the one who is doing Hajj al-Qiran and Hajj al-Ifrad, the Qarin and the Mufrid. They make this tawaf with the intention that is an obligation upon them and that it is the tawaf al-Ziyara. So they have to intend that it's an obligation upon them and they have to intend that it's tawaf al-Ziyara. Shaykh Mansur, he says, هذا tawaf بالنسبة للمفرد والقارن يكون طواف بالنية الفرد والزيارة معا. That the person intends, the one who is Mufrid or Qarin, he intends that this Tawaf is obligatory, Fard, and at the same time it's Tawaf Ziyara. وَيَكْفِيهِمْ تَوَافٌ وَاحِدٌ And it's upon them, it suffices them to do one Tawaf. لِأَنَّ الْإِبَادَاتِ تَتَّدَاخِلُ Because the acts of worship, they enter, enter one upon the other. كَمَّا أَنَّ الرَّجُلْ إِذَا أُقِيمَةَ الصَّلَاةَ فَإِنَّهُ يُصَلِّ بِنِيَةِ الْفَرِيضَةِ Like for example, a person when he prays the Salah, when the, when the iqamah is given, he prays with the intention of it being obligatory, faridah, wa takfihi an tahayt al-masjid. And this prayer suffices him from having to pray tahayt al-masjid. So the two acts of worship, they enter one upon the other. And also, bi nisbatil al-muttamatti' yakunu bi niyat tawaf al-faridah, that the one who is doing hajj al-tamatti' he does this tawaf with the intention of it being obligatory. لأنه تقدم أن طاف للقدوم because his first tawaf was for tawaf al-qudum wal-umrah and the umrah فيبقى عليه طواف واحد بلا رمل so left upon him is to do one tawaf which is this tawaf al-ziyara and there is no rumel there is no being quick in the first four uh, category in the first four circuits of the tawaf there is no rumel like he did in the rumel in the tawaf of the qudum tawaf al-qudum when he made umrah طيب. Uh, the author he says وأول وقته بعد نصف الليلة النحر and the first of its allowed times is after midnight has passed from the night of Nahar meaning the night of Eid طواف الإفادة له وقتان Sheikh Mansour says طواف الإفادة طواف الزيارة طواف الحج it has two times the first of them وقت مجزئ the time which is sufficed or allowed Sufficed, we can say. Uh, the first of its time is after half of the night has passed from the night of Eid. 
لكن يشترط أن يكون قد وقف بعرفات however it's conditioned that the person is conditional that the person has stood at عرفة وبات بمزدلفة and he stayed in مزدلفة فإن لم يقف ولم يبت فلا بد أن يؤديهما however if the person had not stayed at عرفة and the person had not been to Muzdalifa, then it's imperative that the person completes these two these two rites before uh, doing this tawaf. وقد أجمع العلماء أنه لا يصح الطواف الإفادة قبل الوقوف بعرفة. And there is ma- there is ijma, there is consensus from the scholars that uh, the tawaf الإفادة is not valid until the person has stood at Arafa. He says the author وَيُسَنُّ فِي يَوْمِهِ And the sunnah is to do it on the day of Eid Okay, not from Though it's allowed from the uh, Once midnight of the night of Eid has come about It's allowed then But the sunnah is that it's to be done on the day of Eid uh, Sheikh Mansur he says وَقْتُ استحباب وفضيلة The time when it is recommended and virtuous to do this tawaf وَيَكُونُ بِأَنْ يُؤَدِّهِ يَوْمُ الْعِيدِ is to do it on the day of Eid. لفعل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كما في حديث بخاري مسلم حديث عائشة رضي الله عنها like the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did as narrated in the hadith of عائشة collected by Bukhari Muslim حججنا مع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فأصفضنا يوم النحر we made hajj with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and we did the tawaf al-ifada on the day of Nahar on the day of Eid وصنى أن يجعله ضحى and the sunnah is to make it at the time of ضحى كما فعل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يعني after the sun has risen and before the sun has reached the zenith فإنه طاف الضحى ثم رجع وصلى الظهر بمنا so the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he made the tawaf at the time of الضحى and he did this before the time of الظهر because he prayed الظهر in منا when he went back to منا on that day and this hadith is in Sahih Muslim uh, the author he says وَلَهُ تَأْخِيرُهُ And the person it's permissible for him to delay this tawaf يَجُوزُ تَأْخِيرُ تَوَافِ الْإِفَادَةِ عَنْ يَوْمِ النَّحَرِ مِنْ غَيْرِ حَدِّ It's permissible that the person delays the tawaf al-ifada from the day of Eid without any maximum amount of delay فَيَجُوزُ تَأْخِيرُهُ عَنْ يَوْمِ النَّحَرِ So it's permissible for him to delay it beyond the day of Eid وَعَنْ أَيَّامِ مِنَا And also beyond the days of Tashriq, the days that he will stay in Mina. وَذَلِكَ لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَىٰ أَمْرَ بِالطَّوَافِ مُطْلَقًا And that is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the command for tawaf without any restrictions. Gave a general mutlaq uh, command. وَلَيْسَ لَهُ مُدَّةٌ مَعَيِّنًا And therefore there is not f- stipulated a specific time w- wherein it has to be done. لَكِنْ لَا يَنْبَغِ أَنْ يُؤَخِرُهُ أَنْ شَهْرِ ذِي الْحَجَّةِ However, Sheikh Mansour says it's it's imperative not to delay it beyond the uh, month of Dhul Hajjah, لأنهم من الأنساك because this is from the rites of Hajj. فيجعله في أشهر الحج. So the person should do it within the months of Hajj. Tawfiq he says ثم يسعى بين صفا والمروة إن كان متمتعا. After having made this tawaf al ifada, the person he makes the sa'i between صفا والمروة. If he is the one who is doing Hajj at Tamattu' or غيره and others than the Hajj Tamattu' if ولم يكن سعى مع طواف القدوم if they had not made the Sa'i with the Tawaf al-Qudum so the first Tawaf that they were supposed to, that they could have done the Qarin and the Mufrid um, if they did not do it then the Sa'i they only did the Tawaf then now the Sa'i is obligatory upon them Sheikh Mansour, he said, إِذَا فَرْغَ الْحَاجِ مِنَ الطَّوَافِ يَأْتِي سَعِي When the Hajj, the Hajji, he finishes from the Tawaf, Al-Qudum, he comes to do the Sa'i. وَالْحُجَاجْ لَهُمْ حَالَتَانْ مَعَ سَعِي And the Hujaj, they have two situations pertaining to the Sa'i. The first of them, أَنْ يَكُونُ مُفْرَدِينَ That they are doing Hajj Ifrad أو قارنين أو Hajj Qiran. فَهَاؤُلَاءِ إِنْ كَانُوا قَدْ طَافُوا لِلْقُدُومُ وَسَعُوا مَعَهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَكْفِيهِمْ أَنْ حَجِّهِمْ So these people, the Hajj Ifrad and Hajj Al-Qiran, if they did the Tawaf, if they did the Sa'i with the Tawaf Al-Qudum, with the first Tawaf that they did when they came to Mecca, then this would suffice them for their Hajj. Wa Umrat Al-Qarin, and it would suffice for the Umrah of the Qarin. كما فعل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم in the Hadith of Jabir in Sahih Muslim, لم يطف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم didn't make Tawaf ولا أصحابه بين صفا والمروة. Didn't make the Sa'i between صفا والمروة. إلا طواف واحد طوافه الأول 
except for having done it with the first tawaf when they came to Mecca, the first tawaf which is known as tawaf al-qudum they did the sa'i then and they didn't do it again later Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Mansouri says وَإِن لَمْ يَكُونُوا سَعُوا However, it's the case, if it's the case that they didn't do the sa'i فَإِنَّهُمْ يَسْعَوْنَ بَعْدَ طَوَافِ الْإِفَادَةِ Then it's imperative that they do the tawaf that they do the sa'i after the tawaf al-ifadah A second situation pertaining to this sa'i is أَن يَكُونُوا مُتَّمَتِّعِينَ That the people are doing hajj at tamattu' فَإِنَّهُمْ يَسْعَوْنَ وُجُوبًا So in this situation, it's obligatory upon them that they make the sa'i وَذَلِكَ لِأَنَّ سَعِيهِمْ الْأَوَّلْ إِنَّمَا هُوَ لِلْعُمْرَةِ That is because the first sa'i that they did when they came into Mecca, they made the tawaf and they made the sa'i, that was part of the umrah that they did. وَهَذَا سَعِي بَعْدَ الْإِفَادَةِ هُوَ لِلْحَجِّ And this sa'i that they are doing after the tawaf al-ifadah, it is specifically for the hajj. And the dalil, the evidence dalil for this is in Bukhari al-Muslim from the hadith of Aisha radiyallahu anha where she said, فَطَافَ الَّذِينَ أَحَلُّ بِالْعُمْرَةِ بِالْبَيْتِ So those that had made um, the niyyah for doing, those who had gone into the state of ihram for umrah, they made the tawaf uh, at the time of the umrah. وَبَيْنَ الصَّفَوَ الْمَرْوَةِ And then they did صَفَ الْمَرْوَةِ meaning they did the sa'i. ثُمَّ حَلُّوا And then they removed themselves from the state of hajj. ثُمَّ طَافُوا طَوَافٍ آخر بَعْدَ أَنْ رَجَعُوا مِنْ مِنَّا And then when they entered upon the days of Hajj and they did the acts of Hajj, they made another tawaf after they came back from Mina. وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ جَمْعُوا الْحَجِّ وَالْعُمْرَةِ فَإِنَّمَا طَافُوا طَوَافٍ وَاحِدٍ And those who came and they joined uh, between the Hajj and the Umrah, these are, these are the Hajj Qiran, they made the tawaf one time only. What they mean by the tawaf in this hadith is they mean the Sa'i. It's referring to the Sa'i. So as a conclusion, if the Hajj al-Qiran or the Hajj al-Ifrad, if they did this tawaf, if they did tawaf with, if, sorry, if they did sa'i with their tawaf when they first came to Mecca, then that suffices them. However, if they didn't do the sa'i with that tawaf, then they have to do the sa'i now. Whereas the Hajj al mutamatta the one who's doing Hajj tamattu', it's wajib upon him, obligatory upon him to do the sa'i. Okay, after having made the tawaf al-qudum. الرواية الثانية أن أحمد another رواية from إمام أحمد another narration from إمام أحمد أن المتمتع عليه سعي واحد لحجه وأمرته that the one who's doing حج تمتع he doesn't have to make another سعي after doing the طواف القدوم after doing the طواف الزيارة sorry the طواف الزيارة that we are talking about now so when coming from منا and he's making this طواف around the كعبة According to the second opinion of Imam Ahmad, the person, al mutamatta doesn't have to do another sa'i. And this opinion was chosen by Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullah alayhi, by Imam Ibn Taymiyyah and others. The author, he said, ثُمَّ قَدْ حَلَّ لَهُ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ And if the person has finished from this sa'i and from this tawaf, then the person is now free from all restrictions of the ihram. Shaykh Mansur, he said, إِذَا طَافَ وَسَعَى فَإِنَّهُ يَحِلُّ التَّحَلُّ الثَانِي that when the person, he makes this tawaf and he makes the sa'i, then the person is now freed from the second state of the haram, meaning that he's now completely free from the prohibitions of the haram. And this is known as التحلل الثاني. ولا يبقى عليه شيء من المحذورات And nothing is left upon him from the prohibitions of haram. التي كانت حرمت عليه بإحرامه And the evidence in Bukhari and Muslim, the hadith of Ibn Umar, ثم لم يحلل صلى الله عليه وسلم من شيء حرم منه حتى قضى حجه. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم didn't free himself from the restrictions of of ihram until he had completed his hajj. ونحر حديه يوم النحر. And he sacrificed his sacrificial animal on the day of Eid. وأفاض فطاف بالبيت. And he made the tawaf around the Kaaba. ثم حل من كل شيء حرم حرم منه. Then he was after that free from all restrictions of the ihram. The author he says, ثم يشرب من ماء زمزم لما حب. After having made the tawaf and made the sa'i, uh, then the person should drink from the ماء زمزم, and he should drink for the intention that he uh, wishes. زمزم هي البئر المعروفة بمكة. زمزم is the well-known well in Mecca. وسنة للإنسان أن يشرب من ماء زمزم. And the sunnah is that the person drinks from the water of zamzam. 
what dalil fa'l nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the evidence is the action of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as in the hadith in sahih muslim of the hadith of jabir radiyallahu anhu annahu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lamma farga min at-tawaf when the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was free from the tawaf finished the tawaf ata ala bani abdul muttalib wa hum yasquna ala zamzama fanawaluhu dalwan fashariba minhu so the Prophet ﷺ, having finished the tawaf, he came to the tribe of Abdul Muttalib and they were in charge of um, giving Zamzam water to the Hujjaj. So, the, so they gave to the Prophet ﷺ a bucket or something of that sort where the Prophet ﷺ drank Zamzam from. <clears throat> the author, he said, Lamma Ahabba. Sheikh Mansur, he explains this, that Lamma Ahabba means that um, the person drinks with the intention for whatever he wishes. أي أنه يشربه وينوي بذلك أي أمر أحبه من that the person he drinks with the intention for any of the acts or any of the intentions from the following. شفاء شفاء مرض that uh, a person wants to be cured cured from an illness. أو إغواء العطش or the person wants to be uh, cured uh, you know, um, his thirst to be removed from him. أو نحو ذلك من الأمور الحصية or from other than that, from the fact, from the matters which are tangible. Like that he wants to drink it to uh, have good health in his body. Or that he wants to drink Zamzam with the intention that his memory will become strong for the Quran and Sunnah. And issues pertaining to that. And it's been reported from Jabir in the hadith collected by Imam Ahmad. That the Prophet said, ما زمزم لما شرب له. That the water of Zamzam is for that, for that reason that it is drunk. Meaning that the water of Zamzam will act for you according to your intention for it. So like we gave the examples that if a person drinks Zamzam, and with this drink he wants to improve his memory for the Quran or the Sunnah, or he wants to drink so that um, his body will become strong. So then the Zamzam, inshallah, with Allah's permission, will be that which he intended it for. The author he says, وَيَتَضَلَّعُوا مِنْهُ And the person, he drinks it to the extent that he is full. أَيْ يَمْلَأُ بَيْنَ أَضْلَاعِهِ مِنْهُ He drinks to the extent that it goes and fills between his ribs. وَيَكُونُ ذَلِكَ بِالْإِكْثَارِ مِنَ الشُرْبِ And this is based upon drinking it as much as one can. وَقَدْ وَرَدَ عَنْ إِبْنِ عَبَاسٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ And Ibn Abbas he narrated in his statement, Collected by Imam Ibn Majah wa Imam Abd Razak in his Musannaf wa Imam Tabarani fil Kabir and Imam Tabarani wa Dara Qutni and Imam Dara Qutni and Imam Al Hakim in his Al Mustadrak and Imam Al Bayhaqi in Al Kubra. They all collected this author of Ibn Abbas where Ibn Abbas in Radiallahu anhu said, Inna ayatama bainana wa bain al Munafiqeen that the Sorry, I'm just trying to double check here. Uh, that the Ibn Abbas in Radiallahu Anhumah he said that verily the sign between us and the Munafiqeen in Ayatama Bainana wa Bain al Munafiqeen and Humla Yatallauna min Zamzam is that they when they drink the Zamzam water they don't fill themselves with it, they don't drink it uh, plentiful, they only drink it in a scarce manner, only drink a little bit of it. The author he then says, after the person has drunk it, then the person should make a dua from those dua which have been reported in this situation. Sheikh Mansur he said, إذا شرب من ماء زمزم فإنه يدعو بما ورد كذا قال رحم الله that the person when he has drunk from zamzam he should make the dua from that which has been reported and that is what the author said. Then Sheikh Mansur he says, فَحَلْ وَرَدَ شَيْءٌ فِيهِ But is there something which has been narrated to us in this situation? أَمَّا عَنَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ فَلَمْ يَرِدْ إِلَّا تَسْمِيَةَ فِي أَوَّلِهِ As for from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, then it has not been reported except to say the basmala, the bismillah in the beginning when you drink the water وَالْحَمْدُ in the فَرَاغْ مِنْهُ in the الفراغ مِنْه And that you say Alhamdulillah after finishing having drunk the water. وَحَدَ فِي كُلِّ مَاءٍ And this is in all types of water. Whenever you drink any type of water, you say the basmala and you say Alhamdulillah at the end of it. وَلَكِنْ وَرَدَ عَنْ إِبْنِ عَبَاسِ However, there has been reported from Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنه. And this statement that I'm going to read is being reported by uh, Imam Abd al-Razak in his Musannaf and al-Faqihi fi akhbari Makkah and Imam Dara Qutni 
and Imam al-Hakim in his Mustadrak. They reported that Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhu أنه كان إذا شرب من زمزم قال that when he would drink the water of Zamzam he would say اللهم إني أسألك علم النافع أو الله سبحانه وتعالى I beg from you that you give me beneficial knowledge ورزقا واسعا and that you give me provisions which are wide and plentiful وشفاء من كل داء and you give me and you cure me from any ailment and all illnesses so this is the dua which is reported from Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhu. Uh, the author he says, ثم يرجع فيبيت بمنا ثلاث ليال. And then the person after having done these acts in around the Kaaba etc., then he goes back to Mina and he stays there for three nights. Sheikh Mansur, إذا فرغ من الطواف وسعي عاد إلى منا. If the person finishes from the tawaf and the sa'i, he goes back to Mina. وبات بها ليالي أيام التشريق. And then he stays there the nights of the tashriq. ثلاث ليال إن تأخر وليلتين إن تعجل. Three nights if he wants to stay there for the three nights and two nights if he wants to leave early. He says the author, فيرمي الجمرة الأولى. So then he pelts the first pillar. وتلي مسجد الخيف خيف and it is the one which is close to the مسجد الخيف بسبع حسيات with seven stones ويجعلها عن يساره and he puts the pillar on his left الحاج في أيام التشريق يرمي الجمار كل يوم شيخ منصور he says that the حج in the days of the تشريق he pelts the pillars every day وطريقة الرمي and the way that the throwing of the the stone throwing of the stones that these pillars is done is in the following points. Firstly, أن يبدأ بالجملة الأولى that he starts with the first pillar. وهي التي تسمى صغرى and it is the one that is called the small pillar. وهي التي وهي التي تكون أقرب لمسجد خيف and it is the one which is closest to مسجد الخيف. Second point, أن يجعل الجم أن يجعل الجملة عن يساره حل الرمي. That he puts the pillar on his left side when he's throwing the stones, and this is so that he can face the qibla. The third point, and yarmiha bi sabah hasayat wa taqaddam wasf al hasa, that he throws seven stones at the pillar, and the description of the stones has already been given. The author says, wa yataakhir qalilan wa yadu tawilan. After having thrown the stones, the person steps back away from the pillar, and he makes a very long dua. Sheikh Mansur, إذا رمى صغرى فإنه يبتعد ويتأخر قليلا. If the person has finished throwing pebbles at the small pillar, he steps back a little and he makes dua لألا يصيبه الحصى. The reason he steps back is so that he shouldn't, he wouldn't be hit by any of the stones which have been throwing. ولا يضيق الرمات and not to cause congestion for those who are still there throwing. ثم يدعو رافع يديه مستقبل القبلة and then he calls upon Allah سبحانه وتعالى facing the قبلة. Raising his hands. ثم الوسطى مثلها. And then the person does the same with the middle pillar as he has done with the small first pillar. يتجه إلى الجمرة الوسطى فيرميها بسبع حسيات. So the person he goes towards the middle pillar and he throws seven stones. ويستقبل القبلة and he faces the قبلة whilst he's throwing the stones. ثم يفعل كما فعل في الأولى من الدعاء ونحوه. And then he does similar to what he did. From uh, when he was throwing stones at the first pillar, meaning he steps back and he makes a long dua. ثم جمرة العقبة, and then he goes on to the جمرة العقبة, the largest pillar. ويجعلها عن يمينه, and he puts it towards his right. ويستبطن الوادي, ويستبطن الوادي, and then he faces the uh, the valley. شيخ منصور he says ثم يرمي جمرة العقبة بسبع حسيات. He throws seven stones at the Jamrat al Aqaba, the large pillar. And when he is throwing the stones, he has Mecca on his left. And Mina on his right. As this was reported from the Prophet. But however, he doesn't stand there to make dua once he's finished. إذا فرغ من رمي جمرة العقبة فإنه يمدي لمكانه ولا يقف عندها للدعاء. That the person when he finishes stoning the جمرة العقبة he moves away from that place and he doesn't stand there to make dua. وهذا الوارد عن الرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. And this is what has been reported from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. 
The author, he says, وَيَفْعَلُ هَادَا فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ مِنْ أَيَّامِ تَشْرِيقِ He does this in every day from the days of Tashriq that he is staying. Whether he stays the three days or he stays the two. بعد the Zawal and it's to be done after the Zawal. Sheikh Mansour, he says, يَبْدَأُ وَقْتُ الرَّمِي أَيَّامَ تَشْرِيقِ بَعْدَ الزَّوَالِ الشَّمْسِ قَبْلَ صَلَاةُ الظَّهْرِ that on the days of Tashriq, the time for throwing the stones is from the time of the Zawal al-Shams uh, from, sorry, uh, from the time of, uh, from after the time of the Zawal of the Shams وَهُوَ أَفْطُ الْأَوْقَاتِ الرَّمِي and it is the best time for throwing the stones وَذَلِكَ لِأَنَّهُ الْوَقْتِ الَّذِي كَانَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَتَآهَدُهُ وَيَرْمِي فِيهِ and it is the time that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would often or would regularly throw his stones at that time, after the time of the Zawal. As in the hadith of uh, Jabir in Sahih Muslim, Rama Rasulullah al-Jamrata yawm nahar duhan that the Prophet ﷺ, he threw on yawm nahar on the day of Eid, the Prophet ﷺ, he threw his stones uh, at around duha time. وَأَمَّا بَعْدُ فَإِذَا زَالَتِ الشَّمْسِ However, after the day of Eid, meaning the, the, the days of Mina, uh, the Ayyama Tashriq, he threw off the Zawal. Sheikh um, Amir Bahjat, Hafidhahullah Ta'ala, in his explanation, he said that from Zawal to Maghrib, from Zawal to Maghrib are the timings which are allowed in the Madhab. Outside of these times, it's not allowed to pelt the pillars according to the Madhab. The author, he says, مستقبل القبلة مرتبا that the person, he throws the stones facing towards the Qibla and he does the, the pillars uh, in tartib, in order, from the smallest to the largest. Okay, from the smallest to the largest. Sheikh Mansur he said, تقدم أن سنة حال الرمي استقبال القبلة وأنه يجب ترتيب بين الجمار. It's been mentioned before that uh, when the person throws stones, he needs to be fa- he should be facing the Qibla and that he needs to do them in consecutive order, throwing the, at the pillars. The author, he said, فَإِنْ رَمَّاهُ كُلَّهُ فِي الثَّالِثِ أَجْزَأَهُ However, if the person was to do all of the pillars on one day, meaning that he did all of the pillars on the third day of the Ayyam al-Tashriq, on the last day, then this would suffice him. Sheikh Mutlaq Jasr, he says that these days are considered as one time. And all of the pillars for all three days can be pelted in one time on any of those days. However, the author is giving the example now that if he was to throw all of the pillars on the third day, throw the stones at all of the pillars on the third day, then this would suffice him. And he does them in order, consecutive order, according to his intentions. Sheikh Mansur will now explain this. He said, If the person delays his throwing of the stones to the day which is after it, or he does all of his throwing in one day, meaning the throwing of the 11th, the 12th and the 13th, he does it all in one day. فَرَمَّهَا جَمِيعًا فَإِنَّهُ يُرَتِّبُ الرَّمِي بِنِيَةً Then he needs to organize the throwing according to his intention, so that is consecutive. وَيَكُونُ ذَلِكْ بِأَنْ يَرْمِيَ الْجَمْرَةَ الْأُولَى بِسَبْعَةً بِنِيَةٍ أَنِ الْيَوْمِ الْأَوَّلِ And that would be done, for example, that the person throws the first pillar at the first pillar seven stones and he does this with the intention that this is for my this is for the first day the first day's throwing so we're throwing for three days but you're doing it only on one day so you go to the first pillar and you throw at the first pillar seven stones and then you go to the middle pillar the middle pillar and you throw seven stones and then you go to the large pillar and you throw seven stones ثُمَّ يَرْجِعُ وَيَرْمِي الْجَمْرَةَ الْأُولَى بِنِيَةِ الْيَوْمِ الثَّانِي وَهَكَذَا And then you go back to the first pillar and you throw with the intention for the second day. And then you would go to the middle pillar and you throw the stones with the intention for the second day. And then you go to the third pillar and you throw the stones with the intention for the second day. And then you repeat this again for the third day. You go back to the first pillar, you throw the stones with the intention for the third day. Middle pillar with the intention for the third day. Last pillar with the intention for the third day. So you can do all of the throwing on the 13th. So obviously this was a concession that the elderly and the weak they can benefit from on the 13th day because it will be less crowded and there will be less shoving and pushing. The author says, فَإِنْ أَخَّرَهُ عَنْهُ أَوْ لَمْ يَبِتْ بِهَا فَعَلَيْهِ دَمْ 
However, the author is saying if the person delays the throwing of these pillars beyond the 13th day or the person is in a situation where he didn't stay at Mina at all, then the person has to pay a sacrifice. He has to pay a penalty of them. Sheikh Mansour, he says, Ishara ila mas'alatayn. The author is alluding to two matters. The first of them, al-ula, ida akhara rami an ayyami tashriq. If the person delays the throwing after the days of tashriq, fa'inna hajjuhu sahih. That his hajj is going to be correct, lakin alayhi dam. But upon him, he has to pay a sacrifice, a penalty. Likawnihi tarak al-wajib. Because he left out an obligation. Fa'in kana aliman atham wa fada. However, if he, if he was knowledgeable about, about what he was doing, meaning he delayed intentionally with knowledge of what he was doing, then he is sinful and he has to give a penalty. However, if he was ignorant, then he has to pay the penalty and there is no sin upon him. The second matter, إِذَا تَرَكَ الْمُبِيتِ بِمِنَا فَإِنَّ عَلَيْهِ دَمْ لِأَنَّ الْمَبِيتِ بِمِنَا وَاجِبْ If the person leaves off staying at Mina, then the person has to pay also them. The person has to pay a penalty because staying at Mina is wajib. Al-ulama yaqulun bi anna man tarak al-mabit bi Mina fala yakhum fala yakhlu min halat. That the person, the ulama, they say that the person with regards to not having been staying at Mina has a variety of situations from them. The first of them, Allah yakun ma'duran bal qadiran. That the person in this category he was not excused, rather he was able to stay at Mina. So, in taraka al-layali al-thalatha, al-thalath, in taraka al-layali al-thalath fa'alayhi dam. If the person left off all three nights, though he was able to stay there, then he has to pay a penalty. لِتَرْكِهِ الْوَاجِبِ Because he left out a wajib. However, in taraka layla or laylatain. However, if he left one night or two nights, فَالْمَذْهَبْ أَنَّهُ يُطْعَمْ عَنْ لَيْلَةِ عَنْ لَيْلَةٍ مِسْكِينًا Then the madhab is that then for each night he pays uh, to feed a poor person. So if he left off staying at Minna one night, he missed one night, then he has to pay the feeding of a poor person. وَعَنْ لَيْلَةٍ مِسْكِينًا And for two nights that he misses, he has to pay the feeding of two poor people. Another situation, another scenario, أَنْ يَكُونَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ الْأَعْذَارِ is that the person may be from those who are excused, they have an excuse. كَمَنْ بِهِ مَرَضْ like one who is sick. أو مُرْتَبَةٌ بِخِدْمَةِ الْحُجَّاجِ فِي مَكَّةِ or he is connected to the services which are being given to the hujjaj in Mecca, meaning he's one of the people that are serving the hujjaj in a variety of ways in Mecca. أو فِي مُزْدَلِفَ أو غَيْرِهِمَا or he's situated or he's positioned uh, for service in other than Mecca, like in Mina or Muzdalifa or other than that. So this person is permissible for him to stay out of Mina and there's nothing upon him because he's there for the essential services for the Hajjaj. And the evidence is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Taghabun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you are able to do. صلى الله عليه وسلم رقص لسقاط والرعات في ترك المبيت بمنا because the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم gave permission to those who were in charge of watering giving water to the pilgrims and also in charge of those who were taking care of the camels and the sheep etc the shepherds he gave them permission to stay away from منا من أجل الرعي والسقي ألا يقتل على المبيت بمنا however if the person is in a situation where he cannot absolutely stay in منا because the person can't find a place to stay, a physical place. So this person, he's tried his best to find a place to stay in Al-Mina, in Mina, but he couldn't find the place because it's overcrowded. So this person, he sleeps outside of Mina. And there's nothing upon him. Why? Because of the verse that we just quoted. Fear Allah as, as much as you are able to do so. Inshallah, we're going to stop here. And I apologize for the um, brevity of the lesson, for the lesson being a bit short. Uh, inshallah, we will see you next time. If you have any questions, feel free. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you immensely for your efforts. 
and make it in the scale of our good deeds. Yawm al-Qiyamah, Ameen. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.